So let's let's um, now. This is uh, chapter ninety-seven of the Quran for Surah Al-Qadr, and uh, as I said, it's only five verses long. It's not a very long chapter. So before we can uh, proceed to understanding this chapter, we are going to just uh, look back at the previous week, last week, and we're going to start today's session by doing a little bit of tajweed. Um, for verses 9 to 19 of the just the previous chapter, which is Surah Al-Ala. Okay, so you have in front of you in my screen, I think you can all see it, Surah mm. Al-Ala, right? Yes. Uh, we are going to go from verse 9 to the end of the chapter, inshallah. And so let's, let's just do a little bit of practice uh, reciting this chapter, okay? Anyone wants to try? Yes. Raise your hand. Brother Yusuf, good. You're taking the lead. Yep. Let's see. Brother Yusuf, you can start, inshallah. Okay. Thank you. I'll be lay in a shade on you with him. This be lay one man you were him. Alright, Araita in cana alal huda. How am I with Tokoa? Araita in Katsaba, what a walla alam ya alam be all yaro. Be unlona her yaro. Kalla la yinam yanta in a nasfam in nazia. Yes. Why did you stop here? Why did you say Kalla la ilamia? <laughs> Why oh. did you mark pause here? Uh, no okay. You can say like this, you can listen to me. Uh, <clears throat> so there is no pause. Okay. There are some, some verses of the Quran where there is a pause. Okay. But yes, sir. <laughs> Nasia Tibetan Cordia Ada Yet Payado Yes. So as I was saying, Cordia 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 Nasia Tin Cavia Tin Cordia Payado Nadia. The Nada Utzabania Kalla La Yu Tia who was Jud Wakatarib. Very good. You are doing it again here. You say Kalla. Ah, you yes, stop. <laughs> <laughs> you notice that, right? Yes, yes, you're yes. The pause, actually. You're marking mm. the pause. So there be no Kalla Kalla La Yu E. Kalla la yutia who was jud wakatari. Mashallah. Good, good, good. Jazakallah khai, Brother Yusuf. Um, so I'm trying to remember because there is a chapter where there is a marking of a silence. Shadu uh, Allah ilaha Allah, Shadu Muhammad Rasulullah. They will come back to me because there is this Kalla Rana ala Kurubim Makan Yakibun. Let me find it for you, brother. Uh, Arabic Kalla Rana ala Kurubim Makan Yakibun. Okay, let's see. I want to find it because <laughs> there's a point we're trying to make here. Surah to Uh, 
المطففين اوكي سورة المطففين We're gonna find it brother um, Towards the end. See here, look. Do you see this yeah. scene? Huh. This is small silent there. No, sorry. Bell. And then the Sata. Silent. So the sector is after the, the bell. Hmm. And they the, the, the solar, yeah, solar. Yeah, it means you have to connect these two actually. You cannot stop. And then stop. All right. Is it because the sector is? Yeah. So you have to pause for one alif and then continue. Um, just sector latifa means a small, very small pause. Oh, I see. Okay. All right. So. I'm sorry, brother, if I have to mention this. I don't know. Maybe I'm, not, maybe I'm mistaken, but I uh, just wanted to make that point. Um, let's see. Oh, mashallah. Sister Farzana, you want to recite? Let's do it. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure, yeah. So, by the way, thank you. Jazakallah khair for your recitation. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, let's go to Sister Farzana. Assalamu alaikum, sister. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you? All right, let's go ahead and recite starting from ayah number nine. Ayah number nine, sure. Other than uh, I can't hear you very well for some reason. Oh, oh, oh. from nine, number ten. From number nine. Ayah number nine, yeah. All right, the lady and I'll go below him in a shake one in regime. This Miller, your rock man, your rocking. Araita inkana alal huda, O Amara bistakwa. Araita inkazaba wata walla. Alam ya lambi an alaha yara. Kalla la ilam yanta hi lenas fa umbina suya. Nasiya tinka zipa tinka zwiya fal yad u na zwiya sanat uzzabaniya kalla la tutwehu wasjud waqtarib. Okay, Jazakallah khair sister, mashallah. Yeah. Right. Actually, we were starting from ayah number nine, but it's fine. No problem. Good, good recitation, sister Fazana. Jazakallah khair. Nicely done. Right. All right. Do you have any uh, questions about this chapter before we move to our next chapter? Shall we proceed to Surah no. Al-Qadr? Yes, please. Yeah? Okay, let's do it. So, uh, first, let me recite this chapter for you, brothers and sisters. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Inna so you see at the end is two khalqala ta and jim um, now, let's get into this chapter. Uh, this, you know, most of it, 90% or more, is actually uh, Mecca. Mecca. But it seems that this chapter is, there seems to be some disagreement among the people of knowledge, the people of value, as to whether it's Mecca or Madani. And many people, majority of the ulama say that it's actually Madani. It's a Madani chapter meaning that it was revealed in Medina following the Hijrah. So this is an inclination to, to uh, classify this chapter not as a Mecca chapter, but rather as a Medini uh, or Medinan, Medinan uh, chapter. Uh, starting with this first ayah. Indeed, it is we 
who sent this Quran down on the night of Qadr, on the night of glory. Now, inna, inna is we, indeed we. So we, this we, you know, is very common in the Quran. Uh, in the Quran we have it, and it's actually a pure of ta'zim, ta'zim, because the one talking here is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of course. And Allah is one, not many. So the reason why it's a plural is because it shows the magnificence of Allah Azza wa Jal. And it's a common characteristic or feature of the Quran to have this in when Allah uses this uh, plural marker or plural personal pronoun to talk about himself. Because Allah, in fact, his name, uh, one of his names is al Azim. He is the magnificent. And you will encounter in many chapters uh, of the Quran uh, this beginning with Inna. For instance, you have it in uh, Surah Al Al Kawthar, Inna Atayna Kal Kawthar, or Al Qadr, this one, right? Inna Anzalna Hukulayla Kal Qadr. So that we is the we of Ta'zim or magnificence of Allah Azza wa Jal. But in addition to that, among the Arabs in the past and even commonly today, today it's a common feature of the Arabic language when people can use this we when they talk. You know, it doesn't mean there are multiple people, but uh, we can use it in a general sense. For instance, if we say, just translating it into English, if we say, uh, if I say, we have already talked about this. Uh, I'm the only one doing the talking. Right? We have covered this. We have talked about this. We have mentioned this. So even though the narrator is the only one doing the talking or the teaching or the lecturing, he might use this we uh, every now and then. But th that we is different from the we of magnificence that is used in the Quran. All right, so um, the second word of this first verse, it refers to revealed it. What is revealed to it? It's the Quran, right? It refers to the Quran that was revealed. But now an interesting question comes. Uh, when we think about what, when and how the, the Quran was revealed, we want to ask the question, how much of the Quran, the actual Quran, was revealed on this night, Laylatul Qadr? Was it all of the Quran that was revealed on this night? Or was it just portions of it? Okay, that's an interesting question. And the ulama have, uh, have answered it for us. So. The first interpretation of this first uh, verse, we have uh, descended it or revealed it. Uh, it means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have uh, revealed it um, on Laylatul Qadr. Um, uh, sorry, let me just go back to my train of thought. Yeah, just to mention the episode of the revelation of the Quran, we have talked about it when we analyzed the previous chapter, you remember? When we talked about how Prophet Muhammad وسلم, when he went to the cave of Hira and then uh, he got the first um, the first five ayah of uh, Surah Al-Alaq. So that's the circumstance, the historical circumstance. But um, as far as what was revealed, the first interpretation says that um, all of the Quran was revealed, or rather, um, I thought it. Sorry. Oh, so it means that only the first verses, the first five verses, were revealed, right? That's the first interpretation. Only the first five verses of Surah Al Alaq, right, were revealed, and then the rest of it was revealed over the lifespan of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and we know there is an expression called munajjaman munajjaman means in, in small episodes or gradually right until mm -hmm. the death of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so that's the first interpretation of we have revealed it the second interpretation <clears throat> of uh, we have revealed it is that the whole Quran was revealed in its entirety but in fact, there were two steps. Step one was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealing it from al al mahfuz until as sama al dunya And then it stayed in as sama al dunya and it came gradually, step by step, uh, 
from that station as sama dunya to rasulullah over the period of his lifetime okay so you see the two the two uh, interpretations which are not necessarily contradictory in any case this difference is not to be really too much focused on what matters the most is that this uh, this quran was revealed from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala okay that's the most important part of this ayah in we uh, it is indeed we who have sent this quran on the night of Qadr. all right and then we go to the, the second ayah uh, brothers and sisters <clears throat> the second ayah says وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا لَيْلَةُ الْقَدْرِ So this ayah uh, states in the translation, and what will make you realize what the night of glory is? What will make you uh, consider, realize, uh, um, you know, uh, evaluate this layla, this layla, you know? You know, وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ is commonly used in the Qur'an. I don't know if I mentioned this before, but... Um, the reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala <clears throat> sorry uses the term the expression وَمَا is to magnify this night. How about this night? What will make you realize the importance of this night? So it's a, it's an indication of the night's importance and magnificence. And I think I have mentioned this in the past, and when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran says <clears throat> وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ it means that in the following ayah or ayat, he will tell, he will tell us or he will tell the prophet the importance of this uh, of this thing that is referred to. For instance, what will make you realize what the night of glory is? You only have to read the next verse to understand how important it is. So here in the verse three, Allah says, "This night is better than a thousand nights." So when Allah says وَمَا أَدَرَاكَ He will reveal in the next or what is to come uh, what is the importance of uh, the thing referred to. But when um, Allah says وَمَا يُدْرِيكَ Do you notice the difference? وَمَا أَدَرَاكَ وَمَا يُدْرِيكَ You notice the difference, right? Mm. It's not the same, right? So there is a scholar by the name of Abu Uayn Abu Yayna who says that when Allah says, وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ He will tell us, but when He says, وَمَا يُدْرِيكَ He will not disclose it. He will keep the information hidden from the Prophet and from us. So, for example, um, I have an illustration of this. So, as you can see from this verse, first of all, when Allah says, وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا لَيْلَةُ الْقَدْرِ And what will make you know or realize what is this night of glory? This night of glory is better than a thousand months. So Allah gives us an explanation of how magnificent it is. But when he says, وَمَا يُدْرِكَ in, in Surah Al-Ahzab, for instance, look at it here. Uh, here, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ يَسْأَلُكَ النَّاسُ عَنِ السَّاعَةِ قُلْ إِنَّمَا عِلْمُهَا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ وَمَا يُدْرِكَ لَعَلَّ السَّاعَةَ تَكُونُ قَرِيبًا so here, Allah is telling the Prophet, people ask you, O Prophet, about the hour, the day of judgment, the hour. Say that knowledge is only with Allah. And وَمَا يُدْرِيكَ It's not وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ You never know, perhaps the hour is near. And you would not tell anyone. So the knowledge of the hour is part of علم الغيب, the knowledge of the unseen that only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows and the Prophet doesn't know, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Okay, so you got here the beautiful, um, it's actually of a key. It's another key of understanding of the Quran. You have just two very similar expressions, uh, but one of them, when Allah says it, uh, he will disclose the information, but when he uses the second one, which is Wamayudirika, he will not disclose the information. You got that point, brothers and sisters? Oh, so Wama Adaraka, Wama Yudirika. You got that idea? Yes. yes, can I have a confirmation? Yes, yes. Alhamdulillah. So, uh, I want to open a small parenthesis here uh, about uh, Laylatul Qadr, which we are talking about. Uh, you know, there are there are some solid grounds uh, for, for knowing the time of Laylatul Qadr. We know there are things which are confirmed or known. 
For instance, we know that Laylatul Qadr, number one, it happens in Ramadan, number one, right? Number two, we also know that it happens in the last 10 nights of Ramadan. <clears throat> but we also have things about this night which we are not certain about. So this is certain and this is not so sure about. For example, sorry, sorry, brother, can you repeat, please? One is in Ramadan and? And the second is in the last 10 nights. It's still Ramadan, right? Yeah, but it's more specific, right? So these two pieces of, of information are attested to and proven by the Sunnah of Rasulullah He actually mentioned these things. So Ramadan is 30 days. So you have general and then you have a bit more specific, right? So the thing that um, is not so specific or maybe left unsure, which have left uh, ulama having different opinions, is when exactly in these last 10 nights, right? So some, some have stated that uh, it doesn't change. It's always the same night. So some have said that it's always on the 27th meaning that every single year, every single Ramadan, it's the 27th of the nights, of the nights, the odd nights of Ramadan, okay? Others have stated that it's actually the 21st, 21st uh, of, of every Ramadan. So it doesn't move, right? So that's one part of the opinions of the ulama. A second section of the opinions of the ulama, which is actually the majority this is the majority of the ulama compared to the first part. They say that this night moves, right? Laylatul Qadr, it moves. Meaning that the time will change in the last 10 nights from one year to another. And it can be any of the odd nights. So 20, 21st, 23rd, 25th, 27th, and 29th. And this is the majority of the ulama who have uh, agreed upon this um, perspective and at the same time subhanallah if you think about it there is some wisdom behind this uh, from Allah Azza wa Jal because it encourages the Muslim to be consistent in his ibadah you know not to be exclusive or exclusivistic like just worshiping one night and then the other remainder of time uh, not doing anything so this is kind of a, a hidden wisdom from Allah Azza wa Jal Okay, let's move on to the third verse of this chapter. Laylatul Qadri Khayrun Min al Subhanallah. This night of glory is better than a thousand months. al -fishah. Now, if you think about it, if you do a mathematical operation, a thousand months is, is equivalent to 83 years. 83 years. And Allah says, Khayr. Better than that, even better than those 83 years. We know, brothers and sisters, that you know our ummah, uh, the ummah of uh, of Rasulullah sallallahu the ummah of Islam, compared to other ummah, like for example the ummah of Nuh alayhi salam, we have a relatively short life lifespan. You know, we have a relatively short lifespan. Like, for example, if you go to the Quran, and you go to uh, Surah Al-Ankabut, here I'm going to show you. You know how long Prophet Nuh lived? He lived according to the Quran. وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا نُوحًا إِلَىٰ قَوْمِهِ فَلَبِثَ فِيهِمْ أَلْفَ سَنَةٍ إِلَّا خَمْسِينَ عَامًا فَأَخَذَهُمُ الطُّوفَانُ وَهُمْ ظَالِمُونَ Indeed, we have sent, we sent Noah to his people and he remained among them his ummah for a thousand years minus or less 50. That's 950 years, brothers and sisters. Then the flood overtook them while they persisted in wrongdoing. SubhanAllah. So, relatively speaking, our, <laughs> our life span, the ummah of Rasulullah is relatively short. Now, even if you ask, even if I ask you the question, how many people among you have any people they know in their family who lived 100 years or more? Probably almost no one will say I have. I know that no one of my family has lived more than 100 years, uh, even less than that. Uh, so it is attested by the facts, you know, that 
even people who who live a long life, they are not that many compared to the rest of the means or the average. Um, and in fact, um, I don't know if you are aware of this, but there is a hadith of the Prophet وسلم, uh, that states, um, and I will say to you in Arabic first, it's from Sunan Tirmidhi. It says, أَعْمَارُ أُمَّتِي مَا بَيْنَ السِّتِينَ إِلَى السَّبْعِينَ وَأَقَلُّهُمْ مَنْ يَجُوزُ ذَلِكَ The lifespan of my ummah is from 60 years to 70 years, and very few surpass this. Doesn't mean there are no people who surpass it, but very few compared to the, the large majority. Uh, so despite, despite this, you know, in spite of this or despite this, subhanAllah, you know, look at... Um, Look at how Allah Azza wa Jal um, has given us a way to compensate for this short age, relatively short age of 60, 70 and a bit more. Allah Azza wa Jal, he has given us a night which will be an equivalent in worship to 83 years. SubhanAllah. So this is, this is um, <laughs> it is something to ponder upon for the Muslims who do not want to waste their time and they know that uh, life is relatively short and they want to be proactive in the performance of good deeds uh, they have to catch you know they have to catch this night uh, while they have the opportunity uh, uh, you know to observe another Ramadan. okay so uh, another thing now let's move on and we are still going to stay in verse number three because this chapter is only five verses brothers and sisters so verse number three, also, if you look at it carefully, um, Allah says Laylatul Qadr, right? Laylatul Qadr. He doesn't say the day. He says the night, the night of glory, not the day of glory. Why? Why, brothers and sisters? Why is it the night and not the day, brothers and sisters? Do you know? Anyone knows? Is it like same as Allah Pak said, like during night he's on the first um he's on the first um uh, how to say first heaven he's on the uh -huh. first heaven near to the world. But why the night? Other <laughs> than the other time. So not the day, right? Okay. Yeah. Now that's a good point, sister, and it's part of the answer. Uh, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala assigns a higher value and a higher importance uh, to the night when compared to the day. To the night, I'm going to say that again. Allah Azza wa Jal, as far as worship is concerned, as far as worship is concerned, He assigns a higher value to the night when compared to the day. And this is not just uh, valid for Laylatul Qadr. You know, it's proven first, of, of course. First and foremost, it's proven by this verse, which deals with specifically the night of decree or the night of power or the night of Qadr. But we can consistently notice or witness in the Quran that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is urging the believers to perform good deeds and especially worship, extra worship during the nights in relation or in comparison to the days. So if we look at just one uh, chapter, which is chapter uh, 17, Surah Al-Isra, Surah Al-Isra. What does that chapter start with? In the beginning, in the first verse, it says, um, Subhan al -Ladi. I'm going to clean up a little bit because I have too many windows open here. I'm sorry. Let me show you. So you can see from this, oops, you can see from this first um, uh, verse, Look at this. Subhan al-Ladhi asra bi'abdihi layla laylam min al-masjid al-haram ila al-masjid al-aqsa al-ladhi barakna hawla linuriyahu min ayatina innahu huwa al-sami'u al-basir. So the episode of the night ascension for Prophet Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from the sacred mosque from Masjid al-Haram, from the Masjid al-Haram until Masjid al-Aqsa, his night, uh, Isra, it's a night journey, right? By night. So that's one thing already. This happened by night, okay? 
the value of the night. These amazing things happen during the night, right? And also, as far as worship is concerned, when Allah is instructing us or calling upon his slaves or telling them specifically to worship him, it happens during the night. So I have a few examples. For instance, if we talk about Surah Al-Muzammil, Al-Muzammil um, is chapter 73 of the Quran. And Allah says in verse 6 of that chapter, Indeed, worship in the night is more impactful and suitable for recitation. MashaAllah, MashaAllah, brothers and sisters, please consider these uh, important verses, you know, devote your worship to the night. And then another, another chapter, I'm going to give you more so that you can cross-reference all of these. So we have a chapter of uh, Surah Al-Insan, chapter 76 of the Quran. Allah says, وَمِنَ اللَّيْلِ فَاسْجُدَ لَهُ وَسَبِّحْهُ لَيْلًا وَسَبِّحْهُ لَيْلًا طَوِيلًا In fact, here in this verse, the word night is repeated twice, twice in the same verse. And prostrate before him during part of the night and glorify him long at night. Two times the, the word night is repeated in this verse. Uh, another verse, another chapter, Surah to Dhariyat, uh, chapter 51 of the Quran. Allah Azza wa Jal says in Ayah 17, Allah in this verse is describing those believers, these exclusive VIP category or people who do extra worship, right? We were talking last week about people who do extra worship, right? Uh, the the Nawafim. Those people, Allah says, they used to sleep only little in the night. They used to sleep only little in the night. They didn't sleep, right? So that's all of these um, and other, of course, there are many other verses in the Quran that show the superiority that Allah assigns to the night in comparison to the day as far as worship is concerned. And of course, we can balance this with verse, not only the verses from the Quran, but we also can refer to the corpus of a hadith. There is a hadith from Rasulullah, like Sister Farzana has just mentioned to us. She stated that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends every night and to the lowest heaven. I'm going to just quote that hadith for you. Um, so in, it, it comes in, in uh, section or chapter 24, and the title of the chapter is Encouragement to Supplicate and Recite Statements of Remembrance at the End of the Night, right? And the response to that. So we have this hadith by uh, reported from Abu Huraira, who has reported that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying, Allah descends every night to the lowest heaven, every night, not every day, every night when one third of the first part of the night is over and says, uh, in Arabic, he says, uh, I am the Lord, I am the Lord, who is there to supplicate me so that I answer him? Who is there to beg of me so that I grant? Who is there to beg forgiveness from me so that I forgive him? And uh, he continues like this till the day breaks. Okay, so not only in the Quran, but also in the Ahadith, we have reports that um, the night is much superior uh, in relation to Allah. Allah considers the night much superior than the day for the performance of worship. Uh, so therefore, uh, just to conclude or summarize, it's always better. Why is it better? It's good for the hearts. It's also a clearer time for the mind. You know, like in Surah Al-Muzammil, it says it's more impactful for recitation. It's it's more impactful and more suitable for recitation. The mind is clear. The mind is the, the mind and the body are in a state of khushua, you know? Khushua in, in, uh, in Islam, this term khushua means devotion, uh, humility. You are in a state of humility. You are in a state of devotion. That's when everybody else is sleeping, when there's total quiet. 
uh, while people are sleeping, you are devoting yourself to the worship of Allah. So Allah makes known to us that the night is most suitable. And um, if we go to the next verse, inshallah, uh, verse number four now, what comes in verse four and five is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us a bit more about this night, Laylatul Qadr. He tells us about the properties of this night. What happens during this night? So verse 4 says, During that night, the angels and the Holy Spirit descend by the permission of the Lord for every decreed matter. So this is some of the things that happen during that night. And of course, verse number 5, it also states, uh, it is all peace until the break of dawn. We will come back to that. But let's do a little bit uh, an analysis of um, ayah number four. So, Tanazilul Malaikatu al Ruh. Al Ruh, you have probably known that already before. It refers to Jibreel alayhi salam, um, angel Gabriel. Now, why, why does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mention Al Malaika? And then, instead of putting Jibreel inside the category of angel, he puts them. He puts Jibreel separately. Well, the, the answer is that Allah singles Jibreel out, although he is in the category of angels, al malaika but he singles him out to show his high position in the general category of angels. Right. So. Uh, this in English is called singling out the specific over the general. To single out the specific Jibreel over the general, which is the angels, Al Malaika, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is magnifying the status of Jibreel. Alayhi and this is not just, um, this can be found in other verses as well, not just in the uh, chapter of uh, Al Qadr. So, for instance, if we go to uh, Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter 2 of the Qur'an, the, one of the longest chapter of the Qur'an, um, in verse number 98, I will show you the verse now, inshallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, مَن كَانَ عَدُوًا لِلَّهِ وَمَلَائِكَتِهِ وَرُسُلِهِ وَجِبْرِيلَ وَمِيكَالَ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ عَدُوٌ لِلْكَافِرِينَ So you can notice, brothers and sisters, that Allah says, Whoever is an enemy of Allah, his angels, his messengers, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Gabriel and Michael. Although these two are part of the angels, Allah is singling them out to show their higher stature in comparison to the rest of the angels. So in Arabic, we call this Atful um, Khas. Anil Am Al Khas is the specific and Al Am is the general. So Atful Khas An or Al Al Am, favoring one or a specific entity over the general, favoring one specific entity over the general of that same category. So showing the highest status here and standing, uh, and also distinction of uh, angel uh, Jibreel over the rest of the angel kind, so to speak. Okay, then we continue with that verse number four. Fiha means in this night. Now, means by the permission of their Lord, of Allah, but also by, by order, by order of their Lord. They get an order, these angels, and Jibreel get an order from their Lord, not just the permission. But the order from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to descend uh, by the, the permission and order of Allah Azza wa Jalla. And then finally we come to the last verse, which is short. Salam Salam, Salam, peace. It is a peaceful night until the break of dawn. So the peace of this night subsides or continues until the day rises, until the break of dawn. SubhanAllah. You know, um, the ulama uh, have stated that this night has signs for it, as we said earlier, signs which are sure. 
right? It's in Ramadan. It's in the last 10 nights of Ramadan. Uh, and there is another sign which is also very, very confirmed in the Sunnah. But this sign can only be observed once the night has passed. Right? Once it's gone, you can witness the sign of this night. This sign is, um, it's actually the most attested sign of of this night. They say that following that night, during the morning that follows that night, the sun rises without rays, right? in a haze, kind of a haze looking type of sun. Extremely, actually, it's extremely clear to the eye, but it doesn't have rays. So it means once that night has passed and you witness the sun in the following day, you can literally look at the sun with your naked eye without having your eyes affected or harmed you don't have those rays in the following day after the uh, after laylatul qadr so this is one of the most attested signs uh, of laylatul qadr but this is something which can only be noticed after the night has passed so i'm going to stop here inshallah um we are going to have next week uh, chapter 98, which is Surah al Bayna, a longer chapter, of course, than this one. And uh, we are going to stop now and see if you have questions to ask about this chapter or comments. Let me see if you have any questions or comments. Yes, as I remember one thing about this, I, uh, this, this surah that uh -huh. once um, Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala and he mentioned to, I think it's uh, Hazrat Umar radiallahu, that there is an obvious sign in this surah that this night is on 27th. Is on? It's because um, 30 ayahs of this surah means 30 days in a month. And when you go on, on the word um, haya, Salamun Hiya Hatta. Hiya is a 27 word, which means it. So he point out that it means 27. It's a clue for us. But oh. it's actually, uh, yeah, it's actually quite a long explanation, but I just remember a few parts of it. So this is not, a, is it a hadith or? This is a, a it's a kind of situation, uh, I, as I remember that um, they were talking about um, this surah and then um, uh, that Ibn Abbas was a very famous uh, um, scholar to tell the tafsir yeah. of, yeah. yeah, he's very good at that. And then so he point out this, um, that this is 30 ayahs means 30 days in a month. And here uh, is the 27th word. And so, which means it, then it must be a clue for 27th night. Yeah, I see. I was not aware of this. Oh, Jazakallah, my sister. That's another, another interesting information to add. It's quite uh, long. Uh, it's also saying something more wordings and some. So, it's quite interesting, actually. Let me see if I can find it and then I will post it. Yeah. Please yeah, do. Uh, that will add. That will benefit us, inshallah. Inshallah, Okay, so that's another. It, it can be actually another miracle of the Quran to show the the proof by the numbers, by how the Quran is is structured in such a way that uh, it has its internal dynamic and internal you know, architecture, and there's a lot of mojiza or miracle within that. Hmm. That's, that's the beauty of the Quran. Yeah, sometimes it's really miracles inside, and then it sometimes astonishes you. Yeah. Yes. Allah is fascinating. Do you have other comments, everyone? And Sister Farzana, too, do you have other comments or questions? Now, you have to memorize this chapter, brothers and sisters. It's so short. <laughs> hmm. It's only five. It's only five verses. You can do it. Even if you do one verse a day after five days, done. You got it. You got it. You got it memorized. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's practice a little bit our chapter. Uh, I can see there's some. Oh, okay, Sister Sadi. Um, anyone want to get started with the 
I'm sorry? Can I start? Of course, you can, of course. Auzu billahi minash shaitani rajeem bismillahi rahmani rahim inna anzalnahu fi lailatil qadr wa ma adraka ma lailatul qadr lailatul qadr khairum min alf shahr tanazzalul malaikatu war ruhu fiha bi izni rabbihim min kulli am salamun hiya you must have memorized yes Mashallah. good job Barakallahu alhamdulillah alhamdulillah uh, let's go with sister bonita are you there yes how are you sister good alhamdulillah about you alhamdulillah alhamdulillah all right, go ahead. Let's recite it. Udu billahi mina shaitun irrahim. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Inna anzalna hufi laylatil qadr. Wa ma adra kama laylatul qadr. Lailatul Qudri Khoyrun Min Awfi Shahru Tanazzalul Malaikatu Warduhu Fiha Bi Ithni Rabbihim Min Kulli Amr Salamun Hiya Hatta Matulang Il Fajr Masha Allah, good job Sister Bonita, very good. Do you know this recitation by heart? Yeah, that's good. <laughs> Very good, That's good. Now, alhamdulillah, we'll get closer to the end of the the, the, the juz amma, and these chapters will be very close to one another and very short. But still, subhanallah, even though you notice something, even though this chapter is short, but we still spend like 45 minutes doing the tafsir. So there's always more to be said. It's not because it's a short chapter that we don't have lots of things to say about it. Okay, thank you, Brother Yusuf. Can you go ahead? You want to recite? Sheikh, Brother Yusuf, are you there? I think Brother Yusuf earlier. I have to unmute my mind. Sorry. Ah, okay. Too, okay. Okay, let's do it. Out to be lame in the shade on the watching. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Inna anzalna fi laylatil qadr wa ma adraka ma laylatul qadr laylat wa ma wa ma adraka ma laylatul qadr laylatul qadr khairun min awf shah tanzal Tanazalu malaikatu wa ruhu fiha bi idni rabbihi min kulli amr. Salamun hiya hatta matala il fajr. Okay, Brother Yusuf, mashallah, very good. Here, there is a little connection between these two words. With You see the blue part, right? Yes. Is, yes. Is, um, I think it's emerging. Idram. Hmm. Ego misli, uh, so Ego yeah, misleading. Spend a little bit of time on those, right? For example, like this. <laughs> to be honest, I forgot what is the Tajweed uh, rule, but I think it's in Ram Shafi. Ego misleading. Huh? Ego misleading. When mim sukun met with the mim, it's it go misli. Miss misli, misli, mashallah. Yes. Jazakallah khair, sister. No, we from White Island. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> yeah, alhamdulillah. It's my. Mithli, yeah. You are correct because misli means similar. Yeah, mim sukun with the, with the mim. Exactly. So that we spend, uh, it's still harakat, right? It's natural. Uh, yes. In, 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 
MashaAllah, Jazakallah. I see, I think Sister Bonita will start teaching Tajweed to us soon. Oh, no, 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 no. Still, why not? Why way. not? You can do it. Inshallah. I mean, just only, I mean, I mean, inshallah. Allah bless you. Okay, so thank you so much, brothers and sisters, for being here. Uh, and Alhamdulillah, we have completed the tafsir and Tajweed of this chapter. So next week, we're going to move to another chapter, which is chapter 98, Surah Al Bayyinah. All right, Barakallah Fikum. We will just close with the dua. سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته see you next week إن شاء الله وعليكم السلام جزاك الله خير بارك الله خير كثيرا